Jesus. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. We continue to hear Jesus teaching us about the ordinary aspect of our life that he enters into. And sometimes that ordinary part of our life is sinfulness. And so let us invite him there and ask for his forgiveness and mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are our hope and our salvation, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away world receive our prayer you are seated at the right hand of the father have mercy on us for you Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all for the faith they profess are counted Christians, the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that it does that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I was sent. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You visit the earth, give it water. You fill it with riches, God's ever-flowing river brims over to prepare the green. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest, and thus you prove its furrows, you level it soft 
wrapped in it with showers, you bless its growth. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds, he got crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, The sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path. The birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell on the thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred, sixty, or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus continues to teach us the ways of God, but also challenges how we respond to how God comes into our life. And so we see that the sower of the seed almost very extravagantly throws the seed in all sorts of directions. Some fall on a footpath, other on rocky ground, others where there are thorns that choke it, and others that come on good soil. It is way of, way, Jesus' way of telling us about the extravagant mercy of God. And by using this image from nature, he communicates to us that the very nature of God is to be extravagant with his mercy. That should be a real consolation to all of us, especially as we look at our lives that so easily fall apart and fall into sin. And we wonder whether or not we can start again. 
Today, Jesus tells us of God's extravagant mercy, but he also challenges us to see that we need to cultivate good soil in order for that seed of God's mercy to take root in our lives. And there are aspects of good soil that we should consider. The first thing is that good soil is very simple. It's uncomplicated. It doesn't have rocks and stones, weeds or roots that complicate it. Sometimes we hear that something is as simple as dirt, as plain as dirt. That means, in fact, that dirt is what is, and there is nothing that complicates it. And so, too, in our lives, we can become so very complicated. We can begin, maybe, to think about the worries that we have in the world because there are many possessions that we have to guard. Or maybe we begin to begin to allow our lives to get into the affairs of other people's become in some way nosy about what's happening in their life and complicate our life that way. Jesus tells us today that sometimes when we complicate our lives, overly complicate them unnecessarily, we do not allow the seed of God's mercy to come into our lives because our cares and concerns are directed to something else. We're not attentive to God's mercy. But we also know that good soil develops that's why we have crop rotation, where nutrients, uh, new nutrients come into the soil and can develop. And so too in our lives. We can never give up on ourselves to the point where we feel that we really don't have to grow anymore. It was St. John Newman who said that to live is to change, but to be perfect is to change often. And so in our lives, just like soil needs to develop in order to be enriched by the nutrients, so our lives do. Maybe by taking time out for reading, prayer, meditation, rather than maybe sitting in front of the television all the time, but looking for a way in which our lives can grow and that we can change and become better. And finally, the aspect of soil that we should be attentive to is that it reacts to the environment that it's around it. Whether it's the sun or the rain, the snow cover that comes for winter wheat, or even the wind that blows off the topsoil, it has to react to what is happening around in its environment. So too our lives have to react in a way that in, in, is, in, is, in, is in touch with the reality around us. Being Christian is not going into hiding, but it's living in the real world, facing the challenges that we have, rather than walking away because the world seems in some way to be hostile to us. The Holy Father has continually asked us as a church to be a field hospital, to interact with the world and not be afraid of it. We're not a fortress in which we build a moat around ourselves and hide, but what we interact with the world. And so today, Jesus teaches us about the mercy of God. It's very extravagant. It's very open to everything that we need. God does not count the cost of being merciful to us. It is his nature. But so too, our nature is one like soil, good soil, that must be open to God's word by being uncomplicated, not having so much clutter in our lives that we don't take time out for our own faith development and our own uh, worship and prayer. And so too, we need to look for concrete ways in which we continue to develop as persons, maybe in ways in which we learn to forgive other people that we have held uh, different grudges and resentments towards, or maybe becoming more generous. And finally, we need to as well react to the environment around us, not being afraid of the changes that come, but really realizing that in the simplicity of our lives, God's grace and mercy will always be there. And so today, let's learn from the teaching of Jesus. Have confidence in the extravagant mercy of God, but take up the challenge of cultivating good soil.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Inspired by the extravagant mercy of God, we offer these prayers with confidence and hope that the church may always be eager to reach out to the forgotten and neglected, especially the poor, the elderly, the sick, and imprisoned. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of governments, by God's grace, will make decisions that promote human dignity and the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For farmers and all who work in the fields, may their harvest be plentiful, and may they know the gratitude of those who benefit from their labors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that God will welcome them into eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and merciful God, you sent your Son among us to bring forth life and renew the face of the earth. Open our hearts so that we may share the love of your Son with others through Christ our Lord. Pray, my sisters and brothers, and my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayers to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us now offer each other a sign of Christ's peace, trusting in God's mercy, but taking up the challenge to be that good soil to receive it. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
an act of spiritual communion. My dear Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, unite myself wholly to you. Never allow me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effect upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, I want to thank everyone involved in helping make this uh, celebration of the Eucharist through television possible. Our sponsors at Wintrust, our staff here, in the Archdiocese who work so hard uh, to make sure that everything goes right, and everyone here at the Cathedral as well for making us feel at home. We continue to pray for each other, and I remember especially those who are homebound, uh, knowing that this Mass is a great comfort to them. And I encourage everyone, if possible, to return to their parishes, uh, to join those communities of faith as they celebrate the Eucharist and gather around the table of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. The kingdom of God is justice and joy. For Jesus restores what sin would destroy. God's power and glory in Jesus we know. And here and hereafter, our kingdom shall grow. The kingdom of God is mercy and grace. The captives are freed, the sinners find place. The outcasts are welcome, God's banquet to share.